All right, hey, this is Thomas with Believe in the Run. This is Robbie with Believe in the Run. And today we have something kind of cool. I think so. I mean, they want it to be cool. This is the APL Streamline. What does APL stand for, Robbie? <laughs> I know this now. Athletic Propulsion Labs. Yeah. So they're a Los Angeles-based company founded by two twin brothers. They're kind of like the Winklevoss twins of like uh, running fashion shoes, shoes, fashion shoes. Yeah, because this is really, isn't this one of the first running shoes they've had? Yeah, I think so. I mean, so they came to fame like 10 years ago when they made this shoe for basketball that supposedly had this spring in the front and was banned by the NBA. And they had their moment in this. It was a nice marketing moment for them. Yeah. But it seems like it's mostly been a fashion, female-centered sure. brand. Yeah, I would say so. I mean, it's definitely West Coast vibes. Like, the designs of their fashion shoes are probably not my wheelhouse, but... Yeah, and originally when they reached out to us, like, I kind of let the DM sit for a little bit. And then Robbie was like... Because I, I went and looked at it and I was like, I, I'd never really heard of them. I looked at it. The shoe doesn't have a lot of branding on it. it and you and know. someone asked us to review it. So I was like, well, I guess we should. And anytime we see a fashion brand trying to do a running shoe, I'm like, this is going to be good. Yeah. Bring it here. Let us rip this thing. I didn't even see the price when I first looked at it. And I think that's one of the things <laughs> that's, that's, that's going to be the most <laughs> striking. It's a $300 shoe. It is. So that that is that the most expensive road running shoe we've re reviewed? Without a plate, for sure. For sure. And there is a discussion to be had at the price point. I don't know if we have to do that right now. Maybe we should just get into the shoe. Yeah, you can decide if you want to spend $300. And maybe you do just for status. I don't know. But I was ready to pan the shoe. And spoiler alert, it's actually kind of a decent shoe. It's a good shoe. All right, so let's get into it. Can we talk about the toe first, Robbie? Sure, why not? All right, we're going to go with the upper. All right. What is the upper material? So it's like your mono mesh upper, very thin, very breathable. You can see straight through it. So if you wear a pair of bright orange socks, it's gonna look a little orange. Yeah. And when I first tried it on, you can see the toe is super sharp. And it, which is kind of going against the trend of a lot of shoes making more voluminous forefoot. Yeah. So when I tried it on, I was a little worried my toes were gonna rub. Yeah. So I was like already kind of like, how are they making this one? I mean, it's a cramped toe box for sure. And you might even, would you want to size up? Like a half size maybe? Maybe. Yeah. I ended up not having any problems with it. And I did some long runs in this shoe. We'll get to that in a second. The other thing that I thought was weird about the upper is this collar comes up pretty high. So it was hitting my ankle bone. And again, I was like, this is going to be a disaster. It's going to rub my ankle. It's right. going to be bad. Uh, it's just not going to work out. But again, yeah, I didn't have an it's issue. A, it's, a, it's a microfiber upper and the tongue is the same. It tends to stay away from the ankle and Achilles so you don't get that even though I hate just my eyes are killing me looking at this nylon <laughs> abrasive <laughs> strap going right behind your Achilles. Yeah. I didn't have a problem with it but yeah. you might want to look out for that. The footbed is not removable. So what do they call it? Oh. Souffle. The souffle. Souffle, which again. It's like, come on guys. <laughs> okay. right. the souffle. It's a five millimeter sock liner, so you're getting a lot of comfort straight off the bat from that. Yeah. Overall, my problems with the upper would be a little bit narrow in the toe box. You pretty have, tight throughout, but not, I don't know that's a bad thing. I'm just saying yeah. it's pretty tight. You have this, if you have a protruding ankle bone, you probably might get some rubbish there, but most of the things didn't seem to bother me when I was running. The one thing that did kind of get on my nerves a little bit was the lacing. Well, I think the laces in general are kind of trash. Like, they just look like fashion laces. They look, they're not flat. They're yeah. just rounded, almost like a basketball net. Yeah, I don't spend a lot of time with basketball nets like Robbie, but boom, yeah, dunk no, on right, no, <laughs> right over, I'm post, I, postered. Unless I dunk on you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you can see that it's very intricate. And so there's adjusting the laces was more difficult. Like it's not an easy yank mm -hmm. and it cinches up because it's going through here. It's, it's got like, how many holes is this? There's a ton of holes. Uh, a thousand. That would be my one knock against it. But overall, breathable. I wore it in very hot temps. I did anywhere from like shorter runs of like six to seven miles. I did my longest run in these was a 16 mile run. And overall, the comfort, the breathability, I love the shoe. Well, it, it seems like we knocked the upper a lot, but what's crazy is that I actually really like the upper a lot. It really holds the foot like super snug. It does. Makes it with like a racer type feel. 
But that's my whole thing. Like people have gotten into like accommodating. There's a very vocal group of people with wide, I guess, feet mm -hmm. that make a lot of noise. Yeah. And so all these Pipe shoe companies, the <laughs> all these shoe companies have gone out of their way to kind of make wider toe boxes and adjust last for more people. And what that does is if you have a narrow foot, all of a sudden you're like what? swimming up in here and what it just happened? doesn't, yeah, it doesn't feel sporty. But let's get down into oh, some of the magic. Let's do it. So the magic is surprisingly EVA and EVA midsole. It's not super critical. <laughs> we thought it was, right? Yeah, because it kind of has that super critical bounce. Yeah, it was really nice, really bouncy. They say it's their own proprietary blend of EVA, which who doesn't have a proprietary blend? This was one of my favorite midsoles that we've run on this year. Like it just smooth, like you land, it has a nice cush, there's a little bit of bounce back. And even like you can see it without a plate, well, it still has a little bit of like they, kick and toe They off. have a, so they do have an EVA, a hardened EVA shank inside the midsole to give it a little bit extra propulsion. Like I told you, I was ready to trash the shoe and I, and I yeah. ran and I was like, oh, this is. I was almost nervous to put the shoe on for the first run. And I remember I went out for like a seven mile run and on the way back, I was, I wasn't even dry yet. I was sweating, my <laughs> finger was, and I text message Robin and I said, you're not gonna believe this, but APL is a decent shoe. Yeah, so, uh, and then I also put in, I think the most I put in this was like eight miles, but I did, you know, around 25 miles in it. But I did find myself wanting to like, take it out some more, you know? Yeah, that's this always... is definitely one of the ones that I would pull off the shelf again. Yeah, it's, you know you have a decent shoe when you're like, I would, yeah, I wanna run in that again today. Yeah, it just has such a nice feel underfoot. Yeah. So Robbie, what's the drop of this stuff they call super foam? It's not super foam. <laughs> <laughs> future foam. Uh, wait, let's go back in time to the future. Oh, I love going, we do this a lot. I do. It's cool to see what's in the future. <laughs> And what it is, is Future Foam. Yeah, we, we went there in our Hoka time machine. Didn't we go in a Hoka time machine? We one? did, this time we went in the APL uh, time machine, which is, uh, yeah. Put some shit on it's it. It's twice as expensive as shit. the Hoka time yeah, machine. Yeah, um, but it's cool because we're paying Bitcoin. Yeah, you know, it's Doge. Doge, yeah. So it's a 30 millimeter uh, stack height in the back, 22 in the front for an eight millimeter drop of that sweet, sweet Future, future Foam. Future Foam. So yeah, that's what the future holds is just standard EVA. Proprietary. We're going back to EVA in the future. In the future, yeah. <laughs> Drop your super critical. We put in the miles in this shoe. I really like this shoe. If this shoe was any other brand, I'd still be like, this is a great shoe. Well, we were talking about this because we were like, how does APL put out a pretty good shoe? And you have other brands who shall not be named who have put out garbage shoes for the last like five years. And we're like, oh. It's like, just, just, make, a just make a good shoe. <laughs> APL has done it. HRA who's done it. It's yeah. not hard. Yeah. Anyways. A lot of stop people over, have done it. Stop overthinking it. Put some future foam <laughs> yeah. and an upper just on a shoe him. and we'll go. Paying for the future Yeah. Film. I think that we're going to do something fun in the future. Robbie and I are going to take a trip someplace, uh -oh. try out the opposite of this shoe. This shoe is $300. That's going to be a talking point. It is. Robbie. Is this shoe worth three hundred dollars? I, I can't say it's worth three hundred dollars if you're just looking for hey, I want to buy a running shoe. Is it worth three hundred dollars? If you're looking to buy an APL shoe because you like their designs, you like you know their culture, you like them, the brand, and you want to you want a running shoe that works. Yes, this is going to be one of the best probably fashion shoes, if not the best fashionable running shoe you can buy. I think it performs well. Are the materials worth the money? I don't know. It doesn't have any proprietary technology. I mean, they're saying that their yeah. foam is proprietary, but it's not like you're using Michelin rubber and have right. all these components on it that are extra features yeah. that make the cost of the shoe go up. What you have here is a really nice running shoe. And then, 
you might be paying for like brand same as you can't buy, you can buy any t-shirt, but they put Supreme on it and all of a sudden you're paying hundred exactly. bucks for your t-shirt. Same cotton you're getting from the same country. Yeah, but it doesn't look the same without the Supreme. I'll leave it up to you whether it's worth $300 and you want to rock it, but we will tell you, I would say this fits in that Nova Blast category. Yeah. You know, the solid foam daily trainer that you can pick stuff up in. What other shoes would you write? I mean, like? like a lighter, Pegasus maybe? I would say maybe you could go with the Aurora BL. Yeah, maybe. From Brooks, it has that kind of feel. I mean, it has the same type of upper too. I'd almost say you could even compare it to say the Puma DV8. There's a few shoes that are less expensive that you can get a similar feel to. I mean, look, you could definitely get a shoe that's less expensive that feels as good as this, but it's like what we said, it's the style or the brand versus, you know, yeah. a typical running shoe. And it does feel good. I'm gonna tell you the weight for mine at a size 10 and a half was 10.2 ounces. How many grams is that? 286 grams. Yeah, 286. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a fashion company. The shoe is a performance shoe. We think it runs really well. There's some bullshit involved with it. They talk about being more aerodynamic at Airstream. The, the, these line, the flow lines create aerodynamic dynamicism, yeah. dynamicism for the wind to blow around. Okay. Yeah, we'll see if that works. Yeah. Is there I didn't a notice. scientific paper behind that? Yeah. I don't think so. I did run my 60 miles pretty quick. Okay. I don't know if it was because be of, of the aerodynamics. <laughs> what if it turns out you're getting a 4% advantage for yeah, it? There you go. Line. Souffle liner, kind of bullshit, but. <laughs> There's a bunch of, uh, California speak in this show. Yeah, <laughs> but you gotta listen to us. East Coast guys, we're not yeah, gonna steer you wrong. We're gonna keep it real. Yeah. If you want this shoe, it's a good shoe. All right. We like it. Check it out. And follow us for more reviews. We're actually gonna, we have a review of our sleeves that we're gonna do here in a little bit. It's gonna be the complete opposite of this. Yeah. So uh, stick around for that, no spoilers. And follow us on all our social channels. Make sure you subscribe to us here and leave a comment below if you think $300 is absolutely ridiculous. A feeling we're do. gonna get a lot of comments go, about that. Go ahead, I don't care. Hit us. Yeah. Um, and then also check out our podcast. Check us out on Instagram. Join our Strava group. Connect with us. Be yeah. part of the community. All right. And, uh, you know, maybe we'll let you look at pictures of this on Instagram. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's an open public account so they can look all they want. Yeah. All right, cool. Do it. Have a good one. Uh, whatever I do with this shoe. Intermission. We've got a little break while we look up information. Enjoy your time. We call it future foam. Future foam. Yeah. So Robbie, what's the drop of this stuff they call super foam? It's not super foam. <laughs> future foam.